Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel, and I don't think there's been a better time in the history of mankind to be a holder of XRP. Now, of course, over the history of mankind, you've only had uh, less than a decade to be a holder of XRP, but still, I'm just saying right now, with what's going on in the world today, my gosh, I am thankful that I've come across XRP in the crypto asset class when I have. And so you, there's a few things going on, and I'm going to be covering multiple topics that, in my mind, are pretty well related in this video, including the, the concept of the United States dollar collapsing, which is, of course, the global reserve currency. Now, there are a lot of channels out there that, not even just purely crypto related, that just want to hype the hell out of this concept. Now, look, I have strong concerns about the debasement of the United States dollar, but uh, it was interesting in running through this article, because they talk about, okay, what's the, in reality, what are the odds of this happening? What could be the impetus for such, you know, uh, and what would the timeline look like? Would it even happen in our lifetime? So there's a lot to run through here. And then you've got the IMF uh, issuing a, a serious warning uh, regarding debt. That's the International Monetary Fund. And amidst all of this, uh, there's the, uh, the European Central Bank President, Christine Lagarde, acknowledging publicly that, uh, that XRP specifically uh, has, has, it definitely shows the promise of offering superior settlement when you're talking about the way that money's moving around the, plan the planet. Yes, so yes, the president of a central bank on this freaking planet, and it's uh, the European Central Bank, actually absolutely said that and so there, there's a lot to talk about in this video but before we go any further if you would please delicately tap that like button i would definitely appreciate the support and also go ahead and subscribe to the moon lambo channel because if you do it'll turn that frown upside down something something like that i don't know let's go ahead and dig in right now this first piece i'm going to start with is from the balance thebalance.com and it's simply titled will the united states dollar collapse <sighs> i know i just chuckled there but it's, it's not because i think that the, the concept in and of itself is ridiculous to me it's more like inevitably there's going to be a serious problem if if if, um, if we don't have a course correction i just don't know that it necessarily it'll happen anytime soon because right now the whole world's counting on the United States dollar. So as far as the government overseeing it, the United States government, they can get uh, away with a whole lot more tomfoolery, if you will, than uh, the other central banks managing fiat, other fiat currencies around the planet. So a dollar, and here's how it begins. A dollar collapse is when the value of the U.S. dollar plummets. In that scenario, anyone who holds dollar-denominated assets will sell them at any cost. That includes foreign governments that own United States treasuries. It also affects foreign exchange futures, uh, futures traders. Uh, last but not least, it will hit individual investors. Well, hopefully, if you're holding United States dollars, I, I kind of hope you're not considering that an investment. Now, to be clear, I don't have a financial background. I am not offering financial advice, so don't buy or sell anything or hold anything because of me. I'm just sharing my everyday Joe Schmo opinion. But it's clear to me that the United States dollar via printing, which I'm going to illustrate in just a moment, just endless money printing, which is so absurd, uh, it's, um, it's, it's just ruining the purchasing power of the United States dollar. Again, the global reserve here. And so, as a result, holding XRP, it's just going to keep rising in price, certainly relative to the United States dollar. You're just debasing it. And so it's all about what you, you denominate um, any asset in that when you're, when you're considering the value. You know, you, consider, you could consider what XRP's value is to gold or Bitcoin, whatever it is. But in relation to the United States dollar, holy hell, uh, the, all this is going to do as inflation increases is make it take more dollars to purchase stuff in general. That, that is absolutely what, what is coming here. Now, uh, when the crash occurs, and actually, I will say this, even though I'm not some sort of doomsday guy, uh, to me, it's like I said earlier, it's inevitable. So I'm okay with phrasing it like that. When the crash occurs, these parties will demand assets denominated in anything other than dollars. The collapse of the dollar means that everyone is trying to sell their dollar-denominated assets, and no one wants to buy them. Exactly, which is why I'm thrilled to hold cryptocurrency in general, but generally, but in general, rather, I'm talking too fast, let me slow down, <laughs> but specifically XRP, because it's scarce, and it's actually getting used in the world today, and I think these things matter. In fact, XRP is deflationary, the opposite of the United States dollar. You can never print more XRP. And then the piece continues, this will drive the value of the dollar down to near zero. It would make hyperinflation look like a day in the park. And so what would lead to the collapse, though? 
Well, there are two conditions that must be in place before the dollar could collapse. There must be an underlying weakness in the value of the United States dollar, and there must be a viable alternative. And this is where it gets interesting because we know about cryptocurrencies, do we not? And while I don't necessarily buy into the concept that, uh, I, I, not, I shouldn't even word it like that, I don't buy into the concept that anytime soon, of any cryptocurrency will be used in place of fiat currencies in any sort of meaningful way. I absolutely do buy into the concept that it will eventually happen organically, even though just if I had to guess, I'm, like, I'm not going to put a specific timeline down, but I will not be surprised if it, it takes decades for you to start to see that take hold outside of something so catastrophic that uh, at the time of me recording, recording this video in October 2020 that I couldn't even fathom something so absurd happening. And, and then I, you know, recalibrate. I always reserve the right to change my opinion based on new data coming in. Absolutely. But based on how things stand right now at this pace, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it took decades to even start to see something like that take hold. But uh, the piece continues here. In other words, there must be a reason people are fleeing the dollar and there must be something or somewhere for them to go. And what's interesting is that you're already seeing, regardless of the validity, validity of the concern here, you are seeing people acting as though this is something that is representing imminent danger. You absolutely are seeing people flee into gold. You look at how much the price of gold ramped up recently. And and, uh, and then, of course, the money's getting flowing into silver. Uh, it's been flowing into thanks to crazy printing back into the stock market even after the collapse in March. And, uh, and certainly cryptocurrencies. You, like, we're actually seeing this. There's data to indicate this is how people are behaving out of fear. So whether or not it's, it's going to behave like a genuine hedge against tumultuous times, like historically people would argue gold has, technically remains to be seen because there's only so much history for the crypto asset class. But there's an argument to be made. And again, regardless of the validity of, validity of the concern, people are doing that. I mean, I will acknowledge that I am happy that I've diversified, and that is one of the reasons. Not having crypto today would be scary to me. I don't care about the volatility because I understand that volatility in and of itself is not a reason to buy or sell something necessarily. I mean, it could be a pretty good reason to buy something because uh, historically, if you're, if you're talking about, uh, especially when there's an emerging new technology such as blockchain, even if people haven't figured it out, uh, volatility, even though uh, there can be major retracements over the long haul, could potentially uh, go in a favorable, dire favor uh, favorable direction given enough time here. But outside of this, you know, the dollar will remain the world's global currency. Uh, the majority of international contracts demand a dollar payment, so that also adds to its to its uh, to its stability, right? Um, and so it goes on to talk. I don't want to go through this whole piece; it's pretty long. But I just wanted to get the concept out there and share a few things on this topic because it's it's perfectly reasonable to think that crypto is going to have a major impact in the way that people are investing, and we're here first. Last I calculated, I, I, I believe that I'm pulling from memory here, but I calculated this at some point within the last week or so, I think. But it's only, it's like less than 0.02% of humans have ever purchased XRP. Think about that. And we already saw what it did during its last parabolic bull run, did we not? When it went from 20 something cents to almost $4. 0.02% of the population. And it was less back then. It was less than that, you know? <laughs> Um, and, and so I see that and I see the long-term viability of it and I see a world where people are going to want to continue to diversify. Can you imagine holding XRP for a decade or two? What might that look like if indeed it's adopted? And I fully acknowledge it all the time that I could be wrong and maybe it goes to zero, but I, based on all the data available to me today, uh, I could not be more bullish and optimistic for the long-term viability of XRP as long as it continues to get adopted. Um, shout out to the Rock XRP for this next piece titled IMF Issues Debt Warning. Um, and, and by the way, this is against the backdrop of, I think I have this here. Oh, there we go. There's the U.S. debt clock. I haven't talked about this in a little bit. Over $27 trillion in national debt. Some would say that might not be manageable. And you know what the truth of the matter is? At least before the the, uh, the pandemic, and I, I don't know the, the latest um, dollar figures in terms of tax revenue taken and given that, you know, Companies have taken hit, production's way down, services are way down, uh, despite the stock market going up. But consider this. Prior to that, over the last few years or so, uh, the United States government had taken in record amounts of tax revenue, yet the debt keeps rising, and there's their annual deficits. Now, why is that? Well, I think that this is an indication, especially as taxes continue to go up. It's not that there's a tax collection problem. There's a spending problem. It's irresponsibility from the United States government, and they have no incentive to get their house in order right now because the United States dollar already is the global reserve, 
And uh, basically, you know, if you can print the United States dollar legally, and you're the government, you got the keys to the kingdom, my friend. And so this piece begins, the International Monetary Fund has warned that the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed international debt levels already at record highs in 2019 to heights that could trigger a crisis. The warning is contained in a blog post that uh, last week co-authored, among others, by IMF Managing Director uh, Kristalina Georgieva, maybe I'm saying that right, there's a chance, flip a coin 50-50, I don't know, uh, noted that compared to the end of 2019, average debt ratios are projected to rise by about 20% of GDP in advanced economies, a 10% of GDP in emerging economies, and about 7% in low-income countries. So these increases are on top of debt levels that were already historically high. And while many advanced economies uh, still have the capacity to borrow, emerging markets in low-income countries face much tighter limits on their ability to carry additional debt, it stated. And so things get out of control, and there is going to, at some point, if, n if this problem remains unchecked, at some point there will be a tipping point. You can think about the outrageous student loan debt, the little things. It's, all this adds up, student loan debts, outrageous car loans. And by the way, I don't know if you guys have caught in this trend. I'm sure some of you listening actually work in the automotive industry. But um, I certainly, some time ago, caught wind of the idea that um, you know, while four- and five-year car note terms, uh, you know, when you're taking a loan to get a car, were, were pretty, pretty common, um, you know, at this point, people are just, you know, before they pay, pay off the, their car note, they're rolling negative equity into a new car note that's like seven years. Seven years to pay off a freaking car. Like, and these people can't afford it. So they have the same monthly rate, but they're just increasing their actual debt load. So the monthly payment stays the same, and that's not that's not ideal. And you're just increasing. And so people are doing this the world over. So that combined with all... And, and so that's sort of more like a, a you know, individual side of it. So I have concerns about individual debts because people are being irresponsible because they're not taught in school growing up how to respect and treat money and, and what compound interest is. Like So many people don't even know what compound interest is. It's the eighth wonder of the world. If you don't know what compound interest is, Google it please i'm not going to talk about it in this video but holy hell you are missing out on one of the most important aspects of life as it pertains to keeping your financial house in order that's for damn sure but all this seven year car notes and then, and then you've got the government spending out of control too uh, and, and so like where does this end because they're, here's the problem once you have all that debt and then you have an economic crisis suddenly uh you get to the point where individuals that have racked up massive debt and again a lot of it really is student loan debt it's just outrageous uh you know what it costs to get a, a degree and I, I have a college degree and i'm telling you what it costs to get a college degree it's it's overpriced it is almost everywhere it is substantially overpriced and so what you have is people that when economic hard times hit they can't afford to service the debt that they accrued and and the, the the terrible things like you can go you could like declare bankruptcy in certain instances and you can wipe away credit card debt and then you're gonna have a hard time ever getting a loan again you know for probably like about a decade, uh, but you can't wipe away student loan debt. Did you know that you you cannot? It's like a it's it's tantamount to like indentured servitude. You you cannot ever wipe away student loan debt. You have to pay it down. Period. You've got people coming out of college with hundreds of thousands of dollars in that type of debt, and so where do you think this is all going? And so I see this. And I see a clear solution. Again, not financial advice, but my humble opinion, cryptocurrency is one of the ways uh, to, to, to hedge against all, all this, this craziness that's happening right now. And so I don't buy into the concept of the United States dollar collapsing anytime soon. And I reserve the right to change my opinion if something nutso happens that I couldn't have foreseen, but I don't suspect it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, I just think that we're just going to keep on trucking along, keep in, keep in, kick, in, you know, kick the can down the road. Effectively, that's it. That, that's what's going to happen. And I don't know when things are going to get way worse. And so I will always hold cryptocurrency. I will never sell all of my XRP. And I will continue to diversify. And that's just the way I feel. Um, now, um, take a look at this. And I shared this, um, I don't know, several days or so ago. But I, I, I want to wrap up the video with this. Because this is, I'm not going to play the video. But, but uh, this comes from XRP Crow shared a video. And it was of a Christine Lagarde, president of the European Central Bank who said the following, even cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP are vying for a spot in the cashless world in the hope of offering more stable value and quicker and cheaper settlement. There you go. President of a freaking central bank. And this it's not like she's running a third world country, not that there's anything wrong with third world countries, but I'm just saying in terms of the impact, what her policy from the European Central Bank will have, it's, it's, it's notable. 
It, it's, it's absolutely notable. It's substantial. It's worth watching here. And yeah, she talked about Bitcoin and Ethereum throwing them in. I guess she didn't want to just uh, appear as a, a cheerleader purely for XRP, but she knows the differences and she knows that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not being positioned by any developers for the same purpose that XRP is being purposed, uh, positioned as is a bridge currency by Ripple. So... Uh, so, so there you go. So to me, what does it come down to? You want to boil it down. Uh, United States debt, very scary. Uh, money printing, very scary. And um, so, so what, what can one do about it? Again, while this is not financial advice, this is just my own thought process here. Uh, in, invest in scarce assets, you know, desirable scarce assets. Uh, and so to me, that's certainly XRP. And I, I hope Bitcoin is staying power in perpetuity. I really genuinely mean that. I would rather see it stick around forever than see it crash. Even if that means it's number one market cap forever, I don't care. I'm not a maximalist. If the, I mean, it would, it'd be great since um, I hold a bunch of XRP if it's just moon and number one market cap, all that crap. You know, all the silly vernacular about win moon, win Lambo, super duper, would love it. But uh, I, ultimately, I don't care. As long as it continues to appreciate in, in terms of price relative to other assets, in particular, uh, if you the United States dollar, I'm going to be happy. I'm just saying here, but th th these are the reasons that I, will, in part, that I will never sell all of my XRP and I will always hold cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, until unless that thing uh, goes belly up, uh, which, again, I don't know what I don't pretend to know what's going to happen. I, I'm not going to get into it in this video. I have voiced my concerns. I, there are reasons to be concerned in terms of scalability, even as a store of value, because you get to the point where, what if you get to the point where scaling, you got you know hundreds of dollars in transaction fees just to store the quote unquote value. I still think people would be more likely to flow into other assets that don't have those scaling issues, including XRP, especially if there, there's real world utility offered there, and you know businesses need it to conduct their business, right? And so um, I'm not a doomsday type of guy. You know, I, I'm the type by nature. I'm, I'm more. I'm a realist, but I wake up each day happy. I genuinely do. Uh, I, I just, I just do. Like, like anybody else, you know, I can have my bad day and be in a sour mood. I'm a human. I'm just saying by nature that's the way that I'm wired. And so I don't, I don't, I don't have like I don't think the world's gonna end doomsday this or that. I'm just saying. There are reasons to believe that there could be scary, tumultuous times, but even then, I still believe in the resilience of uh, certainly people, United States citizens, but people around the world. We're not just going to curl up into balls and die. So even if this happens and it's messy for years and years and years, like even and that's an if. I'm not saying that will. Even if, though, people will find a way forward, and it won't be fun, but we'll get it done effectively. But anyway, I'll, I will drop off there. would love to hear what you all th uh, have to say and uh, think about on this uh, on this particular topic. But I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.